Palace 2 Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. Right now, we have an ex-international joining us. Welcome to the show, Sam Soji. Thank you for having me. Yeah, um, how are things over there in the UK? Yeah, not bad. Um, we're still a little bit uh, locked down, not um, as uh, freely as, uh, as it used to be, but uh, we're doing well. All right, it's been pretty long we have, we have heard from you, or rather, uh, seen you. I'm sure your fans would like to know where you have been and what you've been up to. I've been, um, you know, I, um, I retired four years ago, so I've been around doing my thing, you know, getting myself educated and um, running my own business and um, based in London. Um, I'm always in Nigeria as well, so yeah, I've been doing, um, I've been out there doing my thing. Oh. All right, uh, of course, I'm uh, still looking at um, your footballing career now. Would you, I would like to ask you this now, all the while you played football, would you say you were fulfilled even after retirement? Well, definitely, definitely. From where I started from and, and to get to where I got to, um, definitely fulfilled, you know. Um, and most people will, will cut their hand to have my career, you know. So I'm um, definitely fulfilled and proud of what I achieved. Hmm. All right. Now, you come from a family of sportsmen. What is the feeling like? I mean, when you have brothers who are into sports and all that, was your house more like a gym or was it a normal, <laughs> a, a normal house? No, it was... Um, well, well, like a gym, there was always a competition going on, you know, um, and, and it keeps going and going. But I've got nephews now who plays. I've got nephew who just signed for Man City. So uh, the sporty family. So we're used to being uh, doing sporting events. Mm. All right. Now let's talk about um, the late coach Stephen Keshi. What are your thoughts on um, the legend? Yeah, I've I met a few times and I've been around him, and um, he's a man who stood for players and. And we all looked up to him. You know, when you're growing up, you, you want to be like Keshi, play like Keshi. I think he's a, before his time playing wise, he was that good. Um, he was the first defender that started playing the ball from the back. And then, you know, when he became a coach, he was, um, you know, he, was a, he, he, gave, he showed us the way of how to become um, a coach out of football. So he was a great man. And um, he's a personal friend as well. So he was a great loss when he, he died. Mm. And about the Super Eagles, you know, lately there has been a lot of talks uh, going on about players bribing their way into the national team. Now, was there anything like this during your time? And were players be picked based on merit or favoritism? Um, I don't know why football in Nigeria is different. You know, um, in Nigeria, th that, that is the problem. The problem of um, doing whatever happens to get to where you want to get to mm. is a Nigerian problem. So I, I, I don't see why people are, are, are using football. But yeah, it does happen. But... Um, at the moment, I'm retired, so my opinion doesn't really count and doesn't really matter. So why get myself involved in talking about it? You know, but uh, it's something that does happen. But um, you know, I, I see no reason why people are surprised. I'm sure you're not surprised because we live in Nigeria. Yeah, uh, definitely. But don't you think players should be uh, picked on um, merits when it comes to the national team? Definitely, uh, I was. Um, you know, uh, it's harsh when you very good and you miss out in big competitions or invitation because someone else has been um has paid his way through but listen in my opinion right that doesn't really count does it so um but yeah if you ask me to answer your question it's definitely um the right thing to pick the right players that is there uh, that is good enough to play for the national team now before i jump to the next question let me talk about you now when you your playing days for the national team um you know a lot of football fans we are all coaches uh, <laughs> when we watch from the football screen and we rain abuses on players when they don't do the right thing how do you manage yeah. how do you manage um these abuses from football fans when especially when the super egos get to lose no it, it it comes with the game it comes with um, being a professional footballer mm -hmm. uh, personally i grew up in worry though i was born in london but i grew up in worry so you know, not get hand and you cost me rich, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you know, some of us are used to. It. Yeah, you have to come come to the game knowing that uh, there's people out there that would uh, cost you or, or abuse you. Yeah. Um, it's easy because I I grew up the way I grew up, and so it wasn't a problem for me. Um, I think players are used to it. Okay. Now talking about um, the foreign coach and the local base coaches for the Super Eagles, which one would you rather go for? Would you do you think that the foreign coaches can lead us back to glory days, or is it going to be in the hand of the home home base coaches? It's a shame. It's a shame the um, the way you know the way Nigerian fans, the way Nigerian uh, administrators see things. What was a foreign coach? Was a home base coach? Uh, you got people like uh, a top 
ex-players or ex-coaches just because they're black or uh, they don't have the chance to to get the opportunity. So, so when you say foreign coach, it, it does annoy me because um, I, I I did my coaching badges and I think I came top. The same thing, so many African players, black players came top. But when it comes to Africa, um, because the white people in Africa think they, they, they're more knowledgeable. So uh, it does annoy me. But if, if you ask me if we have the right um, coach, it doesn't matter home-based, foreign-based, if he's well-equipped, uh, I think he should get the job. Um, but at the same time, I think we've got so many brilliant um, ex-internationals or, or brilliant black players or black um, professionals yeah. who can do a good job. So the, this um, whole uh, concept of um, a foreign coach, it, it does annoy me. Mm. And are we, are we hoping to see you take on, take on some coaching role someday? Um, I've done my badges, but I'm, I don't think I, I want to be a coach. I've got good business going on at the moment. I've got a um, business that gets me out of bed. You know, a life after sport is um, always tough. But uh, when you plan yourself really well, you 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 see that you, you can live your life and integrate into, into the society properly. But yeah, I, I did well in coaching course. I think if I get the opportunity to uh, coach, I, I don't want to be a manager, but I'm more of a defensive coach. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I would um, give it a go if I have the chance. All right, and I hope you get the chance soon to showcase what you have learned so far. Now, some young footballers do not believe in combining sports and education. Can you share your thoughts on this and also advise the young ones out there? Um, yeah, football is, a, is the best game for a young man, but at the same time, it's, it's a dangerous game because every day you walk on, on the pitch might be your last day. Hmm. And so um, having an, an, an education behind your back is... Um, it's very good. But when you say education, not all of us can, you know, be as uh, smart and uh, have a degree. Um, ed education, is, it goes a long way. It's, it's very uh, broad. Might be hand work, might be uh, war, what you like doing. So as long as you have something behind, you know, uh, to fall back on, I think that's the, the right attitude. You know, um, and these young kids, to advise them, they need role models to look up to, you know, um, people that represent them. The ex-footballer who, who's nice, CEO, or ex footballer who's now a coach or who's now a um, FA chairman, mm -hmm. so they can look up to, you know. So, um, yeah, um, you have to get something to fall back to because football can end any day, any time, you know. So, um, it's wise for you to educate yourself. Uh, I did that myself. So, um, not every ex footballer is dumb or footballers. So, there's some of us that had the chance to go back to school and then um, educate ourselves. But yeah, to, to young players, it is very important to make sure you have something to fall back to. Now, uh, coming back to the Nigerian Professional Football League now, what do you think we can do to make the league better in Nigeria? It's, it's far. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm an advocate of um, players' welfare. Um, and when I mean players' welfare, it's not just the money. Um, I think when you, the players are being treated well and uh, the facility is there, I think the league would change. Um, there's too many talks about what's going on. Trust me, you have to look at the players. The players are the main actors. And the reason why everyone jumps on the Premier League is because the players' welfare in the Premier League is really good, you know, and then um, everyone wants to watch the top players. You have to look at the players' welfare in Nigeria and the facility as well. And when I mean players' welfare, not just money. I'm talking about the hotel they stay, you know, the, the, the pitches they play, the buses they go to a games with. There's so many things, and you know, the advice they get, the agents, you know. So there's so many things um, involved to, to make that league look good. And for the administrators of the league, you know, they get, it's okay to be a boss, but when you get people around you that knows what to do, you know, um, you know that that makes you a better boss. I think they should get the right people around that knows exactly how to uh, um, hold a league, a, a proper league, and I think that will help us. Oh, very true. And, of course, one last question from me. Uh, it's about Super Eagles now. Who would you consider as the greatest Super Eagle player? It's hard, it's hard for me to say that. It's yeah. hard for me to pick a player because I, I was there when my brother was there. And so I, I've met lots of players, played with lots of players. But um, I, I, I might shock you because I, I come from a different point of view. I've, um, I'll pick a player that I played with that I, I was really... Um, uh, shocked how good he was. I, I, I would say the keeper, uh, Fisani Yama. I, I would say I was surprised how good he was. So I would pick Yama. Wow.
Thank you very much. And of course, this is, this is the first time I'm going to hear a player give accolades to a goalkeeper because not, not uh, all of us get to give accolades to the goalkeeper who prevents goals from getting in to the back of the net. So I'd say thank you very much for that observation. Yeah. Yeah. No right. It was a great conversation with you. Thank you very much once again for your time, Sam Soji. Thank you for having me. Thank yeah. you for having me. Stay safe. Stay safe, yes.